My name is Chase Oliver, and I want to remind people I'm a member of the Libertarian Party, and the reason why I say that is because it's once again need to be reminded that this is not a left versus right issue. This is a right versus wrong issue when we talk about Cop City. What you have done is you have betrayed the trust of your constituents. You lied to us when you told this was only going to be $31 million. It's now costing twice that, and even if it were costing half that, it would be a waste of taxpayer money. We already have facilities to train our police and would be far less expensive if you just wanted to retrofit that instead of clear cutting forests to create this facility. If you really cared about fiscal responsibility and using the people's taxpayer money wisely, you would not be buying back $36 million worth of land that you gave away for practically nothing. So I'm here to talk about not just the injustice that Cop City brings, but what militarization of police brings to us. I was in the streets in summer of 2020, when we were peacefully protesting the murder of George Floyd, the murder of Breonna Taylor and others, and it was the Atlanta police who decided to bring the tanks rolling down the street and who decided to call in the National Guard. It was y'all who corralled us. It was y'all who were pepper, uh, pepper spraying and tear gassing us. It was the police who were pulling people out of their cars and arresting them for no reason other than the fact they were lost on the night of the protest. And so what does the police get in reward for that? $67 million of taxpayer money to fund your facility? That's ridiculous. I don't think it's right to be giving you $1 until you restore trust with the people. And the way you do that is pretty simple. You do that by requiring the, or by ending qualified immunity for the Atlanta City Police so that we can get our day in court when we're done wrong. You do that by requiring your officers to hold liability insurance. So when they do wrong, it doesn't come out of the taxpayer's pocket for other services. It comes out of the pockets of the police officers who have to pay for those insurance policies. If you want to hold police accountable, there's a lot of ways to do it. But clear-cutting forests so that you can build this facility is a spit in the face of the people who have been out here speaking against it for months and months on end. Take a poll, read the room, listen to the people, and you will see that they don't want this. I also want to speak out against the slander that we are all out-of-towners. I've lived in and around Atlanta my entire life, and I love this city. I love the things that it represents because I love the people of this city, not its government. That's absolutely true. But when you say that we're out-of-towners, that's a lie. Because the truth is, is the people who are out-of-towners are the corporate donors who are backing the Atlanta Police Foundation. They don't live on Peachtree Street. They live on Wall Street. They don't care about the people. They care about the almighty dollar. And they don't have our best interests at heart. And right now, if you vote for this facility, you don't have our best interests at heart. You're bought and paid for. You might as well be getting your 20 pieces of silver. Because right now, you are committing a Judas act against the people of Atlanta. I'm sorry there wasn't an invocation here today. It's Monday, but I'm about to take you to church. Because the Prince of Peace, the Lord Almighty Jesus Christ, taught me to love my fellow man, to not put them down, to not put my boot upon their neck. I support the Prince of Peace. I support a, a, a gospel of love. And I support that all people are free. They have inherent freedom and liberty. And every time you put another law, another regulation, another police force on the street, you're putting the boot on our necks. And the people are getting tired of it. This is a warning to those who are sitting in the ivory towers and those who sit here in elected office. You are making peaceful revolution impossible. And I don't support violence. I'm a pacifist. I oppose the initiation of force. We're not initiating force. Y'all are initiating force against us. Government is initiating force against individual people. And yes, there are systemic wrongs that need to be righted with our policing. There are people who are more affected than others. Those of you who have means, those of you who sit up here in the ivory tower, those of you who take the corporate money, y'all don't have to worry about the militarization of police. It's the people who go to work every day, who earn a living, who go, to, who, who go to work, they raise a family, and they're just trying to do their best. And what you're doing is you're sending more militarized police into our neighborhoods. We don't want it. The people do not want it. And your job is to represent the people. And when you don't do that, you're failing. You're failing. The public comments, the public outcry, what democracy is supposed to look like at the result of what we saw, 15 hours of public comment, is supposed to be 
the city voting against this. That's what democracy, you know how they tell us in school? You know the lies they tell us about this democracy in school? The people come together, protest, tea party, all these glamorized fantasy stories about American history. But it's funny how when you're trying to actually implement those American stories of freedom and liberty and how to gain your justice, this broke the record of the amount of people speaking on a particular topic. And we're going to see all the people that was out there. But it was just cra- this was amazing. So let's get to the Cop City stories. And there's, it's kind of broken down into a couple of different sections here. Let's start with this one here. This is a great one to start. And organizer. And we, on behalf of myself and the PSL, we say no to Cop City. Woo! We say no to police terror. We say no to militarization of the police. And we also say no to capitalism. We are socialists and we are not afraid to explicitly say it because we know that capitalism is anti-blackness, capitalism is anti-women, capitalism is anti-working class. And we will dismantle this system once and for all. The Atlanta government has divested so much money, we better said fund people's needs, not the police and not Cop City. Why? Atlanta only has one level one trauma hospital in the metro Atlanta area. But you want $60 million for Cop City. Atlanta, Atlanta schools are very segregated. You have all this money going towards the militarized police training facility. The funds should be going towards education. That's where it should be going to. The funds should be going to where women can have safe reproductive rights, where they can go and receive the proper care they need, child, free child care, free college. Children should not have to worry about when not being able to eat. The working class people should not be worried about when their next meal is. You got the corporate developers coming in, buying up all the property, hoarding up all the land, but yet you don't want to incriminate them. They are the real criminals, not the working class, not fighting injustice is not terrorism. That's right. We must make it clear today. Fighting injustice is not terrorism. We demand that you defund the police and fund people's needs. That's one of the uh, more viral ones, and this is a member of the PSL. So that's a, a great one. Let's listen to another one. Educated. This, oops. This one right here we'll listen to also. The first responders that have an image problem. Firefighters, EMTs, North Hero units have an image problem. Firefighters don't respond to fire alarms with flamethrowers and get upset when they're told to use water. There is no war on police. There is no such thing as a blue light. The thin blue line is a tantrum of immature and petulant adult children. If your egos are too fragile to accept the rightful criticism of your tactics, then quit. If you can't do your job without somebody constantly hovering over your shoulder, then say it. We'll hold your timid hands at every step. You've already forfeited any career aspirations you may have had. We live here. Y'all have made it abundantly clear that y'all just work here. If accountability makes you uncomfortable, go somewhere else. Atlanta has no place for you. The police have shown time and time again that the training they've been given isn't interested in de-escalation, conflict resolution, or preservation of life. If I had 57 bullets, I could assassinate every member in this chamber with three shots each and still have nine bullets left over. I dare any single one of you to tell me that you believe that is justified, reasonable, or acceptable as standard operating procedure. Wars have been fought over much less. What's the difference between a bullet and a cop? If a bullet kills someone, you'll know it's been fired. If you have a problem, call the police, then you'll have two problems, money or violence. You seem to only respond to these two categories, using one to beget the other. Can't even get the correct dates on your signed off warrants, but expect us to believe that you have the competency and due diligence for a hundred million dollar project that we have told you repeatedly that we do not need and we do not want. The May 31st deployment of militarized police unit on a residential street to raid a bail fund on suspicion of white collar financial crimes is tyrannical. Tyrannical entities must be demolished by any means necessary. You have the option to resign willingly, be cast out politically, or be removed violently. The choice you make today on this bill will be inextricably linked to the method that will be chosen. You will vote no. You will vote no. 
you will vote no. All of you will vote no today, and you will replant every tree you uprooted a hundred times over. Those who make peaceful revolution impossible make violent revolution inevitable. If you build it, we will burn it. If you build it, we will burn it. Now, if if now just overall looking at these public comments, 15 hours of public comments, the most ever seen uh, 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 for something like this. How is this not a illustration of how this is not a democracy? Isn't isn't this a clear illustration of how this is not a democracy? When you have 15 hours of public comment in the city, in these, in these, uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, what is it called? The city council votes. Yes. As if they're all the people came out and didn't say anything. How is that a democracy? We have to wake up. And I'm completely on board with what he says here. If they build it, then we will burn it. Let's uh, listen to this next comment. Another good comment here. And an observation, all of my solutions could fall under categories currently in Atlanta's city budget. Um, I live in Edgewood, and here are all of my sources there cited. Let's analyze the facts critically and without emotion of how we can protect people. Cops deter crime, right? Wrong. A 2014 study found no relation between the number of police officers per capita and perceived arrest risk. Conversely, trial of street lighting in New York reduced outdoor nighttime crimes by 36%. If you want to protect the people of Atlanta, invest in lighting our streets, not in Cop City. A study in 2019 found that helping people who are experiencing economic uncertainty reduces arrests for violent crimes by 51%. If you want to protect the people of Atlanta, invest in affordable housing, community food programs, and other emergency financial assistance, not in Cop City. Cops reduce traffic deaths, right? Wrong. Two 2021 studies found no data to show that traffic stops or police manpower decreased fatal crashes. If you want to protect the people of Atlanta, invest in sidewalks, safety education, improved urban design and road repair. Cops keep bad people in jail, right? Wrong. Cops keep poor people in jail. According to a 2022 ACLU study, 10% of people incarcerated in Fulton County were held because of inability to pay bail. Before they've even been convicted of a crime, these folks have to endure the same deplorable conditions that led to the murder of LaShawn Thompson. If you want to protect the people of Atlanta, focus on rehabilitation. Invest in diversion programs and ensure that they're used. In the first half of 2022, often to incarcerate 312 folks who committed diversion eligible misdemeanors instead of using diversion programs, which are 10% more effective in reducing recidivism. Paragraph one of the Georgia constitution states that all government originates with the people and is founded upon their will only. Funny, it doesn't mention the will of corporate interests. We are the people and we are telling you to stop cop city. And the city council said, fuck that shit and voted for it anyway. Because we don't live in a democracy. When you're seeing the evidence for yourself, literally and in front of your face, let's just go with it. What they're what you see instead of uh, believe. Oh, don't trust your lying eyes, right? Let's listen to this here from Kamal from uh, Black Power Media. Institution allows for a ballot initiative. We see that as the next legal mechanism in order to get Cop City built or stop from Cop City from being built. So that is what we're trying to do. There's going to continue to be. Let, let me rewind it again, because maybe I think the first two seconds wasn't uh, as clear as it could have been. So let's let's listen. Yeah, we're trying to get a people's referendum on the ballot. The Georgia Constitution allows for a ballot initiative. We see that as the next legal mechanism in order to get Cop City built or stop from Cop City from being built. So that is what we're trying to do. There's going to continue to be street protests. There's going to continue to be actions. There's a week of action coming up. But we also want to make sure that we have a direct path to try to stop this from happening. When we have all these people out here today, when we have all the public comment, when we have all the polls showing that people are against it, why is it still being built? Because the politicians are in the hands of the corporations, the developers, and the police themselves. They don't care about the people. These are the same elected officials and their lineage that kicked out all the uh, homeless people to build the Olympics. These are the same folks that tore down public housing. These are the same folks that harass and arrest people who are poor and working class. 
these folks don't have the ear of the people. They are not the people. They don't work for the people. They work for the corporations and the developers. And as soon as we see that, we'll be clear. It'll be clearer for us today more than any other day in which record numbers have turned out to City Hall. But yet, they will not listen to the people. They're going to listen to the corporations and the developers and the police. Thank you so much. Thank you. That is crazy. And that's the point that I was just making, that last point that he made there. Um, and I think that's from Chuck. Yeah, that was from Chuck. Chuck has a lot of content to show. Here's another one uh, that Chuck was able to get. Uh, this is why they're in. So actually, let me play the overall look of where, where this is at. So you get a, 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 a understanding of how many people was actually there. Let's actually play this video that kind of shows that. <laughs> You mean to tell me this is what democracy is supposed to look like? This is the shit they, they, the, the fantasy stories they tell us in our history books about do these things and you will get democracy works and the people and the people of government will listen. Representative government represents what we want. And the city council said, fuck every last one of you here, motherfucker. We're voting for this shit. Just amazing, but it is such a clear indication that we do yeah, we're not trying to get live a in a democracy. A clear indication. Here's another good video that describes the site, the uh, just the people out, uh, uh, the, the outcry, people showing up, the amount of people showing up. So this guy kind of talks about it here. See this huge turnout. Yeah. Uh, we're all here to give public comment at today's city council meeting where they're voting on legislation that would allocate public funds to the cop city militarized police project the initial price tag was around 30 million dollars but as of recently we've come to know it's about 70 million dollars yeah. over the course of i believe up to 20 years in lease payments uh so we're all out here to use the civic process to voice our dissent and show the city council that atlanta doesn't want cop city i mean you can see this like this is historic like we're all out here this is historic. so this is historic with this kind of response do you think it'll uh cop city will end up being built Cop City will not be built, but it's not because of the people in there who we're going to talk to. City Council is not going to listen to us. They are not our friends. We know that. We're not stupid. But we're here to use the proper civic process like they tell us to do so that we can say that we did it. I, right. If they still vote yes on this <laughs> legislation today, if it doesn't get put back to committee or voted no, I don't know what's going to happen. But I can assure you Cop City will not be built. Thank you so much. Thank you. They told you if you make a peaceful revolution... I forget the quote. Uh, impossible. You make a violent revolution inevitable. That's essentially what he's saying here without saying explicitly the words. Mm. Oh, here's the other video I wanted to play. Here we go. Instead of our money being invested to help our people. Let me just rewind just to make sure in the first few seconds we didn't miss something important. Lives being stolen from our communities instead of our money being invested to help our people. And so we're here today to make it clear this is not the will of the people. And if they vote for this, there will be hell to pay. So if it's not the will of the people, we've seen the polls, we've seen the public comments. Why are they moving forward with something that the people don't want? Because politics in Atlanta uses the civil rights movement as a wedge. They pimp the civil rights movement. These leaders on city council and in the mayor's office use quotations by Dr. King to talk about this commitment to civil rights while putting a veil over people's eyes around what they're really doing and how they are standing diametrically opposed to what these civil rights leaders actually stood for. We have pictures of Frederick Douglass up here in city council, mm. up here at city hall. Mm. We have Harriet Tubman. They were abolitionists. Mm. They were abolitionists. Mm. How are we honoring these ancestors in this building with these portraits while we invoke policy every day that stands diametrically opposed to what they stood for? Mm. Native people are up there on that mural. People who lost their lives 
because of land acquisition. The same thing that we are doing right now in 2023. Mm. And so what it really boils down to is Atlanta is no different from any other place that has elected officials that don't listen to its people. We are choosing to use peaceful methods mm. to reject what the government is trying to oppose upon us. A riot is the language of an unheard people. I would warn us not to continue to unhear what the people of Atlanta are saying, which is stop cops. In. Thank you. Yeah. They're, they're, they're trying to tell you. All right. So let's let's continue. Let's continue with this one. Here we go. And then we'll get to the article here. When you arrived at the Atlanta City Hall to give your public comment, can you talk about the different level of security and protocol to enter the premises that you'd ever experienced before? Just describe the scene for us and then what you said. Most definitely. Well, first, let me start by saying thank you for having us on the show today. Um, and when we entered Atlanta City Hall, we were met with bomb dogs. We were met with officers donning AR-15s. We had folks uh, in, in riot gear. Um, we saw a heightened level of security, both in protocol, meaning when we entered into the city hall, we couldn't even bring in food or water. And people were planning to be there literally all day and all night and to not even be able to bring in Gatorade. I had to throw my Gatorade out and I had to walk out of the city hall, throw it out and then come back in. And, and, and you know, it, it took a miracle essentially to be able to even bring pizza in towards the the uh, latter portions of the afternoon into the evening. And we saw law enforcement officers really on every single level of the city hall uh, in the inside of the atrium. And so I had never uh, seen that kind of activity in which uh, our law enforcement response would essentially, uh, you know, criminalize in some ways what we were trying to do, which was to lift up the voice of the people. Uh, and Reverend, I wanted to ask you, the, uh, the mayor of Atlanta has claimed that much of the opposition is from outside uh, agitators and, and a white movement. Uh, could you talk about your own history uh, your, uh, in Atlanta uh, and, uh, and why you got involved in this movement? Oh, for sure. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a sixth generation Atlantan. In fact, my grandmother's granddad, his dad, purchased property in the heart of the West End of Atlanta off of Finley Avenue uh, for essentially $83 without a mortgage. And so our family has been in the heart of Atlanta for, for almost a century. And so, I and mean, I'm talking before the Emancipation Proclamation and several dozens and hundreds of other people. In fact, almost every single person that we saw and heard from uh, last night and, and yesterday afternoon was from Atlanta. Now, granted, there are people who are not from Atlanta as well, but who cares? Because at the end of the day, what we're fighting for is liberty and justice for all, which they pledged their allegiance to uh, for the flag of this yet to be United States. And so if there's injustice anywhere, there's a threat to justice everywhere. And unfortunately, again, democracy has failed us because that is just simply not the case. And so when I think about what the mayor said, in fact, I'll even tell you, is that the mayor's mother taught my grandmother how to do hair, which taught my mom how to do hair. And so when I think about how I got involved in this work and I'm seeing what's happening on the ground each and every day inside of our facilities, I'm seeing you know, children and, and college students pulled out of cars and being tagged and, and, and laser, I mean, not laser tagged, but, but um, uh, essentially targeted for being at the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm seeing people die literally die at the hands of law enforcement, both here in the city of Atlanta and surrounding these counties and these communities, because this is not just about the city of Atlanta. We're going to see departments and agencies all over this nation send its people, send its law enforcement and first responders here to train on urban warfare. And what we saw last week, last Wednesday, what we've seen over the course of the last few, few months as relates to domestic terrorism charges, is concerning and is exactly the kind of reason why we stand in complete opposition to this project. Yeah, I'm going to pause it here and move to the article in just a second. But to me, Cop City, this is the ruling class saying 
we know what's coming. Our repression, our oppression, our austerity, it has it has a a uh it has consequences. And we know those consequences is is uprising from the people, so we need to prepare for that. IE Cop City. They know it's coming. They saw the George Floyd protest and they said, oh, you see that worldwide protest? We're not prepared for that. So before I go to the article, let's go to this because I want to show the video first. This is military style police in Atlanta invade a house to look up three to lock up three people, people in charge of a legal fund that helps cop city protesters get bail out of jail. This is a brazen assault on U.S. Constitution. Um, let's watch this. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. We'll let it loop. But this is insane. This is insane. This is for essentially like desk workers, people who operate like this is how they're going to get them out of the build, out of the out of their place this way. This is a ruling class that's saying, listen. We know there's urban uprising that's on the horizon and you, no one is going to be stop us for preparing the state to combat that. Nobody, not you, pencil pushers who are helping to get people out of jail either. It's absolutely just such repression. And that leads us to the article of with the same name in the title. And this is coming from the Black Agenda Report, state repression targets the Stop Cop City movement. And there goes Kamal. He's out in Atlanta, which is why you see him in the faces a lot, because he's out there. He's one of the forefront in the forefront of this. And it says the caption says Kamal Franklin of Community Movement Builders. He's also part of Black uh, Power Media. But the community movement builders are the people who's out. That's the, the organization that's out on the ground over there. And other organizers announce a bail re referendum effort at a June 7th press conference. So they're going to try to, and he spoke about this in the, in the video we talked about, they're going to try to get a, a, a bail referendum on the ballot. Could you imagine? You're going to see the people who are going to come out against that. Watch and see who's paying for that. See that? See, let's see. But let's read the the article. Cop City is Cop City is an effort to in an effort to ensure that state violence will bring the most draconian methods to bear against black people. State violence is also being used proactively in an effort to end opposition to this creation of Atlanta's white ruling class and their errand boys and girls who are ostensibly control uh control a fake mecca for black people she's talking about the black coons who control this city who are going along with this that's how she's describing it quote the politicians don't care about the people they don't work for the people they work for corporations the developers and the police the atlanta city council ignored the largest mass mobilization ever because the corporate funded Atlanta Police Foundation controls them. That's a quote from Kamal Franklin. Atlanta, Georgia is no Mecca. The idea that it is good for black people, uh, the good for black people city is a lie. Atlanta is little more than a glorified plantation where powerful white people give directions to the black people they choose to be overseers. The power of the latter group is severely limited, of course. They can always be counted on to act on behalf of the white power structure they serve. Remember, it was uh, Keisha Bottoms who was the mayor. Now it's somebody else, some other coon who's the mayor. No one should be shocked that members of the Atlanta City Council listen to hours of impassioned testimony from their constituents opposing what they call a public safety training center yet still vote to approve an initial 31 million expenditure by a vote of 11 to 4 the center is commonly and more accurately known as a uh, cop city and thousands of people have mobilized to keep it from being built in the days before the vote the degree of official perfidy was revealed with the public were 
was uh, was revealed when the public were informed that the estimated cost of the center was more than double what they were told. The cost of the cost to the city is 67 million and not 30 million and not the 30 million figure that had been stated ever since the project was announced. So now I pause here. So now Cop City is no longer 30 million, 31 million. It is now 67 million. And as stated by that PSL member in the first video I played in the outcry section, there's one trauma hospital, but the city has $67 million to give for this training center. The PSL member also mentioned about the schools needing improvement, but we have $67 million for this uh, police uh, warfare train, uh, uh, urban warfare training center. Just truly absurd. Let's continue with the article. The state of Georgia and their Atlanta lackey spun into action after the budgetary fraud was exposed and arrested three organizers of the Atlanta Solidary Fund, a bail fund used to support protesters who have been arrested. The city and state have been mobilized, has mobilized brute force, killing one protester, Manuel uh, Turan, with 57 bullet wounds and charging others with terrorism. Before the bail fund arrest, three other organizers were charged with felony intimidations of officers when they shared already public information which identified the killer cop, the killer police. Now, pause here. Where are where is the Democrats? Where, where are the National Democrats on this? Where's the black uh uh where's the Congressional Black Caucus on this? Where's Stacey Abrams on this? Remember Stacey Abrams, who was who was had a problem with black male voters in Atlanta? She's silent on this. Maybe this is why you, you didn't have the support you needed from black male voters. Atlanta Solidarity Fund organizers were arrested by, by a SWAT team and charged with uh, charity fraud and money laundering because they reimbursed themselves for expenses. Judge James Altman released the three on a $15 bond each, quote, paying for camping supplies and the and the like. I don't find it very impressive. There's not a lot of meat on the bones of the allegations that thousands of dollars are going to fund illegal activities. This is the judge. But the city of Atlanta and the state of Georgia are not alone in their acts of repression. The federal uh, Department of Homeland Security has also weighed in on calling protesters militants who they say compromise or comprise a violent far left occupation. When the DHS report was made public, online access was suddenly removed. This is so clear what's happening here, and they're just trying to do it regardless of the pushback. Cop City would be more than a police training center. The 85-acre site would be a mock city used to train police in crowd control methods. It would be a militarized policing center, a police policing center training law enforcement from uh, around the country. So not just peace police in Atlanta. Cop City is a response to the 2020 protest which sprawl, which sprang up across the country after the police killing of George Floyd and the uh, protests in Atlanta, which took place after the killing of Rashad Brooks. So this is them saying, hey, oh, we saw what could happen. This could get out of hand where we could actually lose against the people. So we need to create this training center so we can beef up our tactics on repression. And that's essentially what this is. I mean, this is this is so. But it goes in line with the last three years where I feel like we are living through a time that is so revolutionary and what's happening. Like it can trigger so much of a revolution. This is one of those things. Cop City is such on the verge of can trigger a revolution along with a bunch of other things. <laughs> This is the time. Cornell West is running here. We got this going on here. We got uh Democrat Party moving us towards uh, 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 war with two superpowers, Russia and China. You got austerity measures with the debt ceiling that just happened and they're making cuts. And they're putting that out another two years to come back and make more cuts. 
something like this too much happening for something not to pop off here. And you see what's happening with labor right now. Strikes popping up everywhere. UPS is coming up. Shit's about to pop off. And um, it's not a coincidence that channels like RBN, channels like Do Dissidents is taking off. We formed after all of this uh, lovey-dovey Obama, progressive Democrat, Bernie Sanders, AOC, the squad bullshit. We are rising after the sentiment. We are speaking to the sentiment of revolution, the sentiment of not milk toast progressive NATO left change, where we're just $25 minimum wage. That's it. No, we're looking for more than that.